On March 31st, 2022, Wizards of the Coast introduced a brand new, never before seen format to Magic the Gathering. Pioneer. The introduction of this format in March of 2022 was an excellent decision, since many Magic the Gathering players have been clamoring for years for an eternal format that is cheaper and a lower power level than modern. What's more, Wizards of the Coast has been working hard behind the scenes to create a parallel digital version of this format on Magic Arena. That way, both online players and paper players could experience the brand new, never before seen format of Pioneer. While Arena does not currently have 100% of the cards needed to play Pioneer, a light version of the format was still released called Explorer with the goal of working towards a full Pioneer experience. This was wisely done because it would be absolutely crazy to create a brand new format like Pioneer and not have it on your premier digital client. <laughs> Luckily, Wizards of the Coast is a company with its finger firmly on the pulse of the community and deft in all matters digital. So when they created Pioneer just a month and a half ago, they were ready to enable Explorer on Arena without even having to be asked. In this video, I... What's that you say? Pioneer sounds like a format that came out years ago with no arena support, frantic bannings followed by lethargic bans, followed by an arena-only format known as Historic, which left Pioneer to languish in a pro tour -less competitive circuit? You must be mistaken. Pioneer just came out with the announcement of the creation of the Magic the Gathering Pro Tour and is so new a format that they have only just begun adding it to Arena. <laughs> Surely if Pioneer came out years ago, the entire thing would at least be on Arena by now. You must be thinking of Brawl or Frontier or Tiny Leaders. Well, whenever it came out, Pioneer is back, like a phoenix rising from its own ashes. And all joking aside, Pioneer is actually a lot of fun to play right now. And this video will guide you through getting started in the format, learning the meta and building your first Pioneer deck. Pioneer is a 60 card constructed format consisting of all cards printed in standard expansion sets from Return to Ravnica to present day, minus a curated ban list. The Pioneer format never rotates and has a wide diversity of decks using cards from throughout a swath of Magic's history. And there are even some pre-constructed challenger decks which are an excellent starting point for those interested in the format. But what if you don't want to start with a pre-con? How do you go about building a deck for Pioneer? The first question you should ask is, what kind of deck do you want to play? Most Pioneer decks can be broken down into one of three categories. The first category is the eight one-drop decks that make the most out of the redundant copies of one mana cards legal in Pioneer, Opt and Llanowar Elves. The second is made up of decks that are built around individually powerful cards. And the third consists of synergy-driven decks that are somewhat flatter in terms of power level. Let's start with the eight Opt and eight Elf decks. 80-point decks are decks that play four copies of Opt and four copies of Consider, a functionally similar card from Innistrad Midnight Hunt. Eight Elf, on the other hand, refers to decks built upon the play sets of Llanowar Elves and Elvish Mystics, functionally identical mana dorks available in Pioneer. At first glance, it may not be immediately clear why these two kinds of decks are under the same umbrella, but the two strategies have more in common than you might think. Both 8 Opt and 8 Elf decks offer greater consistency than any other variety of deck in Pioneer, since more often than not, they will have something to do with their mana from the very first turn of the game. Both 8 Opt and 8 Elf get to play fewer lands, since the cantrips help you find your lands and the Elves serve as mana sources themselves. Both decks provide you with a clear path to the mid-game, either by filtering your draws into cards that matter for a given matchup and fueling your powerful delve spells, or by accelerating you to 3 and 4 mana to play your more expensive cards ahead of curve. They also both come with similar downsides. As strong as these cards are early on in the game, they can often be weaker top decks in the late game when you really want to be drawing your higher impact spells. The three primary eight op decks in Pioneer at the moment are Is It Phoenix, Is It Narset Control, 
and four color Ascendancy, while the two major eight elf decks are Naya Winota and Mono Green Devotion. It's important to recognize, however, that both the eight opt and eight elf backbones can be plugged into a number of different strategies, perhaps some that don't even exist yet. Is It Phoenix is a powerful and grindy spell-based deck that aims to put arc-like phoenixes into the graveyard early and return them to the battlefield later to attack for six or nine damage, often followed up by a galvanic iteration into Temporal Trespass to take two extra turns. Is It Narset Control is a similar deck, but rather than attempting to fill its graveyard with arc-like phoenixes, it simply plays a blue-red control-based game plan, with the goal of assembling the combination of Narset, Parter of Veils, and either Day's Undoing or Collective Defiance. Casting Day's Undoing or targeting your opponent with Collective Defiance's third mode while you have Narset in play makes them lose their hand and then only draw one card to replace it thanks to Narset. This Narset wheel strategy is notorious in both Commander and Legacy, and now it has a home in Pioneer as well. Wait, don't leave! Four Color Ascendancy is an every color but black combo deck that pairs Jeskai Ascendancy with Sylvan Awakening, turning your lands into creatures that both generate extra mana with each non-creature spell you cast, and steadily getting larger as you cast more and more spells. Naya Winota is an aggro deck with one of the best aggressive top-end spells ever printed, Winota Joiner of Forces. This deck turns non-human creatures sideways, which, with Winota on the battlefield, allows you to put large humans such as Tovalar's Huntmaster from your deck directly into play, tapped and attacking. Oh, and the humans you put into play also get indestructible until end of turn. You know, cause then Winota just wouldn't be good enough. Mono Green Devotion is a ramp deck that puts a lot of green color pips on the battlefield early, then ramps out massive creatures and planeswalkers with Mana Dorks and Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. Once this deck gets going, it's pretty much impossible to stop. So if you find yourself on the other side of the table from Turn 1 Forest, Lana War Elf Go, be ready to kill the elf on sight. So what about the rest of the format? Well, because of the somewhat limited card pool available to Pioneer, most decks don't get to make use of redundant copies of cheap cards to make their decks tick. There are, however, several cards that are powerful enough on their own to form entire archetypes on the back of their own strength. Now that's not to say that the other cards in the decks aren't strong too, but the centerpiece card in each of these decks is irreplaceable. Let's start with Azurius Control and the Planeswalker you love to hate, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. Teferi, Hero of Dominaria is the strongest Planeswalker legal in Pioneer, and one of the strongest Planeswalkers ever printed. If you played Standard when Teferi was legal, you'll remember the sinking feeling of dread that comes when your Azurius Control opponent slams this card on turn 5. Just as he did in Standard, Teferi has carried the Azurius Control archetype on his back in Pioneer, thanks to a more recent supporting cast of Wandering Emperor, March of Otherworldly Light, and Memory Deluge. Recently, this deck added 20 cards and a companion, too. Because what self-respecting Azurius player could ever turn down an eighth card in their starting hand? Thoughtseize is perhaps the strongest card in Pioneer that sees very little play. It is also the primary reason why the Rakdos midrange deck exists. These decks back up the best discard spell of all time with a bevy of strong standalone threats like Graveyard Trespasser, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and Chandra, Torch of Defiance. This deck is great against the eight elf decks and other creature strategies, but struggles against combo and the eight opt decks since it has difficulty ending games quickly. And the combo and eight opt decks have enough resiliency that it can be difficult for a single thought seize to shut them down. However, if Inquisition of Kozilek or something similar ever enters the format, look out for thought seize decks to immediately move up to the eight one drop category. Now, you may have never heard of it, but in the ancient history of Magic the Gathering, there was an obscure card known as, uh, uh, Black Lotus. 
Believe it or not, this little unassuming artifact is actually the most broken card to ever exist. So imagine what would happen if you turned Black Lotus into a land, allowing you to use it more than once. And then let's say, while we're just spitballing here, you gave that land hexproof. Lotus Field is literally just Black Lotus on a land. Sure, it has a downside of sacrificing two lands, but when you copy it with Thespian Stage, you now have two Lotus Fields. And the second one didn't have that downside. Combine these two lands with hidden strings and pour over the pages to generate mana and dig through your deck and yeah, you've got a combo stew going the best combo stew in the format. This deck usually wins via Emergent Ultimatum, Omniscience, and a pile of different Wish and Tutor spells to pull Approach of the Second Sun from your sideboard and casting it twice for the victory. And yes, this may shock you, but there is a mono-red aggro deck in Pioneer. Since time immemorial, pairing cheap red creatures with cheap red burn spells has been an effective Magic the Gathering strategy, and the same is still true in Pioneer. Pioneer's version of Red Deck Wins is made possible thanks to a powerful red creature that's seen play across all magic formats, Eidolon of the Great Revel. Strong against any deck that plays spells that cost three or less, or in other words, virtually every single deck in magic's history, Eidolon is an excellent check to combo decks, highly punishing to other aggro decks, and a must-answer threat against control. Backing up Eidolon as a pair of one-drop creatures with prowess and a host of burn spells to put opponents on the back foot from the earliest turns in the game. Mono Red also gained a substantial upgrade recently, with the new Chandra from Crimson Vow serving as a powerful top end to the deck, providing card advantage, a mana engine, and a clock all on its own. With its eight prowess creatures, you may be wondering why Mono Red isn't included in the eight one drop category. That's because the eight one drops in Mono Red don't currently plug and play into any other red deck the way eight opt and eight elf do in most blue and green decks. Monastery Swift Spear and Soul Scar Mage require a density of cheap, proactive non-creature spells. Neither Opt nor Llanowar Elves carry with them the same strict deck building requirements. Let's talk synergy. It's more than just a corporate buzzword. It's also the foundation of decks in our final category, synergy-driven decks. These decks don't have any one single card that defines the archetype. Rather, the deck works together like a well-oiled machine full of multiple, equally valuable parts. Lovers of aristocrats' strategies will be happy to find two different sacrifice-based strategies in Pioneer. The first is a Jund food strategy based more around creature sacrifice, while the second is a Rakdos anvil deck that primarily utilizes artifact sacrifice as the core of its engine. Both decks play the standard all-star cat oven combo. You know the deal, Witch's Oven sacrifices Cauldron Familiar to make a food token. Cauldron Familiar can then sacrifice the food token to return to the battlefield, generating a loop that you can do once per turn, draining your opponent's total life. And all of this is backed up by Mayhem Devil, the best card aristocrat strategies have seen in quite some time. The two main tribal decks in Pioneer are Spirits and Humans. Both tribes can come in a variety of archetypes. Spirits can be Mono Blue with Ascendant Spirit and Curious Obsession, or it can be Azurius with Spell Queller and Selfless Spirit, or even Bant with the Azurius Shell plus Collected Company. Humans can be almost any color combination as long as one of those colors is white. You can even pull a five-color version thanks to the new land from Neon Dynasty, Secluded Courtyard, serving as a redundant copy of Unclaimed Territory. Greasefang may look like it should be included in the Individually Powerful Cards section, but Greasefang doesn't do anything on its own. The reason Greasefang decks work is the synergy between Greasefang and Partheleon. The two really are a match made in heaven. Parthelion requires four power to crew it. Oh, and would you look at that? Greasefang has four power. Greasefang returns Parthelion to hand at the end of the turn. But what do you know? Parthelion leaves behind two 4-4 four -four angels on the battlefield. Greasefang decks tend to be either Mardu or Esper, and tend to do a whole lot of nothing if you can't assemble the titular combo. But when you do pull off your combo, your opponents will feel as though they've been hit by a truck. 
And that's Pioneer, at least that's Pioneer as of this moment in time. Being a relatively new format, the Pioneer metagame is always shifting, often from set release to set release. With the recent addition of Streets of New Capenna, the format has continued to evolve. Cards like Ledger Shredder, Giada Font of Hope, and Illuminator Virtuoso have already begun to make their mark. But that's part of what's cool about Pioneer, and as a relatively new format, joking aside, it's still one where I feel deck brewers have a lot of room to try out new things and new strategies. And I hope very much this video has been helpful for you learning about, or perhaps getting back into, the Pioneer format. You can help me out greatly just by remembering to subscribe, hitting like, or leaving a comment, and especially, especially by sharing this video with a friend. And remember, when you're buying Magic the Gathering products and accessories, when it is possible, when it is reasonable to do so, try and spend that money where you spend time playing this great game, and that's at your local game store. You're supporting your magic community. Help but feel you didn't rightfully earn your position. How dare you? I lied about my past, placed sinister hexes on my competition, threatened the hiring committee, and vowed to exact revenge on this plane if I didn't get the tenured position. Yeah, I know, that's all very standard stuff in academia. There's still something off about this. I can't put my finger on it. But you don't just go from villainess to necromancer to tenured professor. Look, just sign off on my review or I'm going to turn your bones into a thick purple soup. Jeez, all right, all right, here you go. Here. Signed. I gotta say, I really prefer classic Lily. What do you mean, classic Lily? I'll show you. I've got her calling card right here. I told you to never call me again. Huh. I can see why she's a fan favorite.